Hey everyone, it's Chris with King Grizzly. If you've used Elementor's Loop Grid widget, you'll know that it's a really effective way of displaying your dynamic content. All you do is create some posts, or maybe some custom posts with a custom post type. You build a loop item template that styles how you just want one of those posts to look. And then you can just drop a Loop Grid widget onto your page and pull in all of your content dynamically into a nice grid layout. But if you've used it, you may also have noticed that you don't get that much control over the way the items are laid out. Whereas Flexbox gives you some control over how items are positioned, whether they're centered and so on, this widget actually uses CSS Grid behind the scenes. And what that means is that each consecutive item just fills the next space in the grid. So if you have a three column grid displaying 11 items, those last two items will be on their own row and aligned all the way over to the left. But what if you want them centered? Or what if you wanted them to take up the full width of the grid between them to give you some balance to your layout? Well, unfortunately, Elementor's Loop Grid widget doesn't let you do this, but I'm going to show you a quick and easy way to achieve these kinds of layouts with just a few lines of CSS. So if you're ready to try it out, let's jump in. So I've created 11 simple posts and a loop item template and then a simple page with just a container and a loop grid widget on it. So firstly, I'll show you the posts. So if we come over to posts and as you can see, I've just got 11 ordinary WordPress posts. There's nothing in them, no content, just a post title. If we now switch over to the theme builder, I will show you the loop item template that I've created. So we'll switch to loop item, and here it is, it's just a single grid item, and we'll open that. And all this is doing is it's building the layout for one single item that's going to be displayed on the grid. So it's just the post title and nothing else. And finally, I've just created an ordinary element page. There's a one container on there, and inside that I've got this one loop grid widget. And as you can see here, it's pulling in the posts, it's using our single grid item template that we just saw, and I've got it set up to display three columns and 11 items per page. So it's displaying all 11 posts. And here you can see what that layout actually looks like when it pulls in all 11 posts. So if we inspect the widget, here you can see that there is in fact a three column layout that's being generated by Elementor. So if we want to change the layout and center these last two items, for example, down here, items 10 and 11, then what we're actually going to need to do is split this grid into more columns because it's going to be difficult to center two items like this when you've only got three columns. So let's go back to the editor. And the first thing we're gonna do is change this to a six column layout. We'll go back to our page and we'll select the loop grid widget. Now, if we switch to the advanced tab and come down and look at the custom CSS, this is where we're gonna do this. So I've prepared all of the CSS here already. It's currently commented out. So what we'll do is as we work through um, these new features that we're going to add, I'll uncomment each block of CSS to show you what's happening. And all this CSS will be down below the video in the description, so you can copy it and try this for yourself. So let's make this a little wider so we can see what we're doing. So the first thing we need to do is make this a six column grid. So we'll uncomment this here. And here we can see that we're building a new layout with six equal width columns. Now with six columns, this is obviously going to mess slightly with the layout. As you can see here, we now have a rather odd looking layout now that it's been split into six columns. So. How do we address that? Because we still want it to look as though everything is in three columns. Well, the easiest way to do that is to make sure that each item spans across two of the grid placements, because two threes are six. So let's do that next. Let's uncomment this block. So this is saying that we want each item to span across two grid columns. And I'm using this selector here in Elementor to target only desktop devices. Now I'll show you why I'm doing this a little bit later on but just bear with me for now. So now we should have three columns. And although it looks like nothing has changed, this is because the width of the editor window has actually gone below the desktop 
breakpoint and we're only targeting desktop. So if we actually update this and switch back to our front end page and then refresh, hopefully we'll see nothing has changed. But if we now inspect the page, here we can now see that we do indeed have six columns and each item is spanning across two of them. So let's first look at centering items on the last row. Let's suppose we want to center the last row's items when there are only one or two items on that row, two orphaned items, if you like, on a row of their own. Let's deal with two items on the last row first. So we need to target the second from last item in order to center it. But we can't just say second from last item because what if we only had nine items on display in a perfect three by three grid? Because this is dynamic data that we're pulling in after all, so we don't always necessarily know how many items we're going to be displaying. Well, if we had a perfect three by three grid, then in that case, we wouldn't want to apply our change here because that layout is already correct and there are no orphaned items on the last row. So what we need to target is actually the second from last item, but only if it's also in the leftmost position on the grid. And we can do that with some CSS by chaining together the last child and nth child selectors. So once we've targeted it, we just need to say that we want that item to end at grid position four, because that will move it into a central position. And that in turn will push along the last item that's next to it. And together, those two items will then be centered across the full width of the grid. So if we uncomment this next block of CSS, that's exactly what we're doing here. Again, we're targeting desktop devices and we're chaining together the nth last child and nth child selectors. So don't worry about these numbers for now. If you use these, you'll find that everything should work nicely in the front end, which we'll have a look at that in a second. So we're saying that second to last item, when it's also in the leftmost position on the last row, should end at grid column four and that will shift it along nicely and push the one next to it along as well. And then both items will be centered. So just a point to note here, sometimes the layout may not look quite correct in the Elementor editor. As you can see here, we're currently looking at the tablet breakpoint because the window is quite narrow. And sometimes these layouts, especially when we're using these selectors and numbers here, will look slightly different in the back end to how they look in the front end. But don't worry about that. I can assure you that it will all look fine in the front end. So let's update these changes now and then we can switch back to our front end page. I will close this console window and let's refresh the page. And there we can see that it's worked. We've now got items 10 and 11 and they're centered across the bottom row. So now let's deal with a scenario where we've got just one item orphaned on its own on the final row and let's center that as well. So it's a similar principle. Let's uncomment the next block of CSS. So all we're saying here now is that if this is the last child item and it's also in the leftmost position, then it must be the final item on its own in that row. Otherwise it wouldn't be in the leftmost position. So we can select it by chaining these selectors together. And then we'll say that we want that one to end in grid column five. So in other words, that will push it over and it will span across the middle two columns of the entire grid and then it should be centered. So let's update those changes. And now, of course, what we'll need to do to test this is to actually reduce the number of items on display down to 10. So we've actually got that one item on its own in the last row. So let's go back to the grid itself. Let's click on the content tab and change that from 11 down to 10 items. And we'll update again. Now we'll switch back to the front end and refresh our page. And we should only have 10 items on display. And now the 10th and final item is centered right in the middle of the grid, just like we wanted. So what if we wanted the scenario where either one or two of the last items are orphaned on the final row and we want them to take up the full width of the grid? So if it was one item, it would span across all the columns. And if it's two items, they would take up half the width each. Well, let's deal with that scenario next. So we'll switch back to our CSS. And what I'll do now is I'll comment out 
everything that we've added so far because we finished with that demonstration. And we'll comment out this block as well. So we can actually target the grid items in the same way as we did before, but this time we actually want to adjust the number of columns that they span because that will effectively change their width. So let's uncomment our next block of CSS. So here's the CSS that caters for when there are two items on the final row. And this will make sure that each one spans three of the six columns. So between them, they'll take up the full width of the six columns. And then beneath it, we've got the same thing for when we have just one item orphaned on the final row. And in that case, of course, we want that to span all six of the columns. So if we update this, and I've just noticed that I've commented out something I shouldn't have done. So this section up here needs to be put back in because we still want each item to span across two columns. So that, that's a piece of CSS that applies across all the changes that we're making here. So that shouldn't have been commented out. Apologies for that. Right, so now if we update again, and now switch back to the front end of our page. So if we refresh now, we've still got 10 items on display and that should make the 10th item span across the full width of the grid. And there we go, it does. So let's now switch back to 11 items in the grid. So we've got two items on the final row and we can test whether that works as well. So let's go back to the grid settings and let's switch back to the content tab and go back to 11 items per page and update. And now if we switch back to the front end of our page and refresh, we should have items 10 and 11 back on the final row again. And as you can see, they now both take up half of the width each and are nicely symmetrical across the entire width of the grid. So as you can see, it's really quite simple using a few simple lines of CSS to actually really take control of these grid layouts and override some of Elementor's settings to achieve the kind of layouts that you might actually want in your front end pages. If you want a different number of columns than three in your layout, then you will need to adjust the numbers in the CSS that we've been adding. So you might need each item to span a different number of columns, for example, or you might need to change the last child and nth child calculations in the CSS. But by playing around with the CSS we have here, you should be able to achieve what you're after. You may also decide that you want to change the number of columns on tablet or mobile. So for example, you may want to reduce the number of columns from three down to two on tablet, or maybe even down to just one column on mobile to give a proper responsive styling. So in this case, all you need to do is duplicate the relevant blocks of CSS for the styling you want and change the desktop part. So let's switch back to our CSS. So if we come down here, so for example, if you had a different number of columns for tablet, for example, we could copy this block here, put it down here, change the desktop part to tablet or mobile, depending on which device you're targeting. And then simply you could change the number of columns that each item spans from two, for example, to three. So now on desktop, each item will span two, and on tablet, each item will span three. This may not be what you want, but you get the idea. You can make a truly responsive layout by changing the CSS like this. I hope you found this useful and hopefully it will let you take what's already a very powerful widget and turn it into something even more powerful so you can have real creative control over how your grids look on your front end pages. If you like this video, please do consider subscribing to the channel. Thanks for watching. I'm Chris and I'll see you on the next one.